assemble once again to celebrate with joy the Word made flesh. How beautiful is the good news, how radiant is his glory, how perfect is his timing. How gracious is the Father to give us his Son for us and for our salvation. We follow the order of service found in your service folder this morning. We begin with our opening hymn, O Come All Ye Faithful. rise. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, to him who alone does great wonders, who by his understanding made the heavens, who spread out the earth upon the waters, who made the great lights, the sun to govern the day, the moon and stars to govern the night. Great is the Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. But our inquiries have separated us from our God. Our sins have hidden his face from us so that he will not hear. We look for light, but all is darkness. For brightness, but we will walk in deep shadows. We look for deliverance, but it is far away. For our offenses has many in his sight, and our sins testify against us. Our offenses are ever with us, and we acknowledge our sins. 
The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. From the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up to David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called the Lord, our righteousness. Prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. Do not be afraid, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be praised forever and ever, alleluia. We sing our next hymn. Please be seated. rise for prayer. Almighty God, grant that the birth of your only Son in the flesh may set us free from our old bondage under the yoke of sin. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The congregation may be seated. We'll have our choir come forward.
Superior to the angels as the name he inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have become you, I have begotten you. And again, I will, I will be his father, and he will be my son. And again, when he brought his firstborn into the world, he said, Let all God's angels worship him. About the angels, he says, Make his messengers winds and his ministers flaming fire. But above, about the sun, he says, God, your throne is forever and ever, and the scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God has anointed you with the oil of joy beyond your companions. 
Here ends our second lesson. We sing our next hymn. Our gospel lesson for this holy day is taken from the first chapter of the gospel according to St. John, verses 1 through 14, which will serve as our sermon text this morning. Please rise in honor of the Christ child's name. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him everything was made, and without him not one thing was made that has been made. In him was life, and the life was the light of mankind. The light is shining in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as an eyewitness to testify about the light so that everyone would believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. The real light that shines on everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not recognize him. He came to what was his own, yet his own people did not ac accept him. But to all who did receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. They were born not of blood or of the desire of the flesh or of the husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and dwelled among us. We have seen his glory, the glory he has as the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. Here ends the gospel reading. Please be seated as we sing the response of him.
Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our text this morning is from our first lesson, the uh, first chapter of John, verses 1 through 14, which we read just moments ago. Dear friends, fellow redeemed in the name of the Christ child, our Savior, Jesus. Last night, here at Holton, on Christmas Eve, we heard and we pondered the well-known words of Luke chapter 2. As we read, listened to, pondered those words, we pictured Mary and Joseph arriving at Bethlehem, Joseph anxiously and hurriedly trying to find a vacant room. We could picture Mary so carefully wrapping the baby Jesus in a piece of cloth and laying him in the manger. We can almost hear the angels' announcements and the songs of the heavenly host. We can picture the shepherds' startled faces as they turned, as it, they turn, their faces turned to joy as they rushed to Bethlehem. Maybe we could see the slight, slight, slight smile on Mary's face as she pondered and thought about all these things that have happened. The Christmas story is recorded for us in Luke chapter 2. And it's romantic. And we love it. In fact, we love it so much that it is the basis of every nativity in every home and every church every year. The Christmas story the Apostle John tells in his gospel is a little different. No one would call it romantic. There's no expecting virgin mother. There's no caring father. There's no baby. There's no swaddling clothes, no manger, no angels, no sheep, no shepherd. And I doubt that any of you have memorized it. But it's no less important and it deserves no less of our attention. So John starts his Christmas story not uh, in the days of Caesar Augustus or Quirinius, governor of Syria. Rather, he takes us back into eternity, before creation, before time began. John said, in the beginning, and we can't help but think of Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. And the Apostle John does this very intentionally. See, he wants to clearly show his readers, first of all, who this Jesus is, really, and secondly, why the reason he came and dwelled among man in the first place. Now, our goal for this Christmas Day morning is to, for just a few minutes, marvel. Marvel at who this baby born in Bethlehem to Mary and Joseph, angels by angels, vi announced by angels, visited by shepherds, truly is. And today we're simply going to walk through the first 14 verses of John's Gospel and take in his unromantic Christmas story. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. The Word. The message, God's recorded revelation, his agent to create everything, the way he communicates with the human race. This is the name for the second person of the Trinity, God's Son, the Christ, Jesus. And when he, and, and he was there in the beginning, our text says. 
You see, John, when he wrote his gospel very late in the first century, there was this idea floating around that Jesus was less than God the Father. Sure, he was great, a great moral teacher, a great miracle worker. He may even have been, in some way, the Son of God. But God, God, as big and powerful as the Creator God, no way. Can't happen. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? People, even whole religions, some groups who even call themselves Christian, say the same thing about Jesus today. Well, the Apostle John doesn't allow for that. He says the word, in other words, Jesus, is eternal. He has always been with God the Father, and he himself is God, equal to God the Father. He was not created, but he is the creator. And this word, the eternal God, would have a relationship with mankind, which takes us to what John says next in verses 4 and 5. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. You and I might be tempted to take light for granted. We have it at the flick of a switch, a touch of a button, sometimes even by our own voice. We walk outside and there's light. There's sun, there's moon, there's stars. When you've been in a camping situation and you wake up in the middle of the night, that light, that flashlight is so important. To be able, able to go to the bathroom or get up and do something that you needed to do because without it, Underneath the trees, you don't see too much. Our world is covered in darkness, not the same kind of darkness. This darkness is the darkness of sin and death. But look at what John says. The light shines in the darkness. The darkness has not overcome it. Even before the word made flesh and has made his dwelling among us, the light was shining in the darkness. God made the first promise that Eve's offspring would crush Satan's head. The light shined in the darkness. The light shined when they were no longer in Eden, and yet Adam repeated God's promise to his children. The light shined in the darkness as Noah believed and proclaimed the promise. The light shined in the darkness through the prophets, through the apostles, and that light shines still in the darkness today. The light shines in the darkness through God's church, through its very believers. It happens among you and through you. In the last month, many postcards from many different churches went out to tell other people, to invite them to their church to experience the Christian message. Friends, neighbors, family members, co-workers, all receiving that wonderful invitation. That light that shines in the darkness.
God says that his light still shines today. And he says that you are a part of it. But it doesn't always seem to work, does it? Like all those cards that are sent out by various churches. People still don't come. Why is it? Sometimes it seems like the darkness has overcome the light. John picks up in verse 6. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all men, all, that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through the world was made through him. And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. And even though Adam repeated God's promise, Cain still met murder, murdered his brother Abel. Noah believed and proclaimed concerning the light, but after 120 years, only his family was with him on, it, on the ark. The rest of the world refused to believe and was destroyed. And how do the prophets and the apostles do? Some were stoned, sawed in two. Some were put to death by the sword. The light was in the world, John says, but the world did not recognize him. His own did not receive him. And the world, excuse me, the word, that light, isn't always recognized or received today either. And I'm guessing all of those cards that went out this year went to people who maybe weren't interested, didn't want to hear about it, went right into the trash. Maybe some invites that you gave this year to people out there seem like they didn't bear any fruit. And perhaps it's not just the people out there and their darkness that has you so frustrated. Maybe it's the person in the mirror. Maybe you have your own darkness. The same sin that you struggled with last Christmas and the Christmas before showed its head again this year. Your words and your actions still cause pain and hurt. Your life doesn't always reflect the word's light. And if that if that's true for you, if you are frustrated, if you are troubled by the darkness of your sin, I want you to pay close attention to what John says next. Verse 12 and 13. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believe his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, nor a husband's will, but born of God. You are God's child. You are. Your own darkness, your sin, doesn't change that. Because you being his child doesn't depend on you. You aren't born into God's family. 
It's not a decision that you or your parents made. It's not your will or your actions that get you in or even keep you in, for that matter. You are God's child. You are part of his family because he gave you that right. You are God's child. It's a gift. It's all about God and what he has done for you. And what God has done to make you his child is found in the last verse of John's unromantic Christmas story. Verse 14, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us and we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father full of grace and truth. Wow. I'm sure you know those words. You've heard them a couple times today already. You likely were familiar and heard them many times before today. But let's marvel at them again. The Word became flesh. God became man. Why? So that he could save man. That's what happens on Christmas. The Word wrapped himself in human flesh, giving us the greatest present of all, himself as the Savior that we so desperately need. You see, if we needed information, God would have just sent a teacher. If we needed entertainment, he would have sent a miracle worker. But we needed to be rescued from the darkness of sin and death. So he sent us a Savior into our darkness. And that's his glory that we have seen, that we have witnessed. And when we marvel at these words from John, when we take time to contemplate what happened in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago, we are marveling at what God's Son did to save us the great, big, eternal God that John describes in the first three verses enters into our dark world of sin and death and becomes a helpless baby. He lives and walks among us. He lives and walks as one of us, placing himself under the same demands of God's law, his own law. And he fulfilled every single one of them. But then he died a death that was not his own. He suffered the torments of the cross, suffered the torments of hell for you and me. And what started on Christmas ended at Easter as he proved himself to really be the great, big, eternal God by walking out of that grave so that someday you and I can walk out of ours. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Now, there may not be a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger in John's Christmas story, but we see the God who wrapped himself in flesh so that he could save us. Merry Christmas. Amen. Please rise. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. His peace be with you. Amen. We continue now. Uh, by confessing our holy Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We bring the offering forward. We give thee but thine own, whate'er the gifts may be. All that we have as thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. May we thy bounties thus as stewards true receive, and gladly, as thou blessest us, to thee our first fruits give. Amen. We continue with the prayer of the church. On this holy day, dear Father, we rejoice to hear the good news of great joy that a Savior has been born for us. For fulfilling your prophecies and in the fullness of time sending your Son to be our Savior, we give you our heartfelt thanks and praise. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. What a great mystery of our faith this is, that God has become fully human for our salvation. Even though he is the all-powerful Lord of all, he is wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Help us always believe that this precious child was born as our substitute to be our Savior. In the midst of our joy, we grieve for the many people in our world who do not know that Jesus has come to bring them forgiveness and healing. As the shepherd spreads abroad the good news of the birth of the Savior born for all the world, may we also make use of the unique opportunities this holiday presents to tell others of what we have seen and heard concerning the child. Grant that the true peace between God and fallen mankind may comfort all people. As the angels sang out their praise, move us also to sing out our praise to you. Today and every day, as the joy of Christmas remains in our hearts, glory to God in the highest. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. We sing our next hymn, O Little Town of Bethlehem.
rise for prayer. O Lord God, Heavenly Father, pour out the Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us strong in your grace and truth. Protect and comfort us in all temptation and bestow on us your saving grace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one true God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. We sing our next hymn. Please be seated. morning once again to all of you and a, a very Merry Christmas to you. Um, today we have uh, our, um, just the announcements that I have for you are just the up and coming uh, different uh, services that we will have over the next couple of days. Um, first of all, we have tomorrow morning, we have our Sunday service uh, at a regular time, but it will be a, 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 a song service. We'll be singing more more Christmas carols, and there will also be Lord's, the Lord's Supper uh, to, uh, to partake of as well. And then next Friday we, is our next service at 7 o'clock. That will be our New Year's Eve service. Uh, there will be communion there as well. And then our Sunday service, again, with the Lord's Supper uh, the first, on the 2nd of January. Uh, so uh, those, those coming up um, uh, I'd like to take this moment uh, on behalf of my family to wish each and every one of you a truly blessed uh, Christmas, one that is focused on that, that unromantic story or on the romantic story of last night. Uh, in, in either case, uh, we have a, a wonderful Savior who has come to us, who has come to live among us and save us from our sins. 
And for that, we are truly grateful. God's blessings to you this Christmas season and always.